half an hour. It's just gone ten past eight. Good morning, watching BBC Breakfast. And Mike Ashley is one of Britain's most controversial businessmen. The founder of Sports Direct spent many years avoiding the spotlight, but he's now a household name following a series of negative headlines. We'll be talking to him in just a moment in his first television interview since his firm came under fierce criticism criticism for the way it treats its staff. But first, though, here's Ben with a look at what makes Mike Ashley such a contentious character. Mike Ashley founded Sports Direct after leaving school in 1982 with a single store in Maidenhead. It is now the UK's largest sportswear retailer with nearly 500 stores. When it floated on the stock exchange in 2007, Mr Ashley made nearly a billion pounds. But in recent years, the company has been criticised. MPs described its main warehouse as a Victorian workhouse. Mike Ashley has since promised changes, including abolishing controversial zero-hours contracts for shop workers. I'm delighted to say that Mike Ashley joined us on breakfast. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Um, can I pick up on you on that point about MPs calling the business a Victorian workhouse. I mean, I know you've launched an independent review to try and address some of those issues, but that's incredibly damaging, isn't it, to, to you and to your business and to the reputation? Yeah, undoubtedly, yes. So, you know, what can I say? We definitely had some things we had to fix, and hopefully we've, in the 90 days, we've fixed a lot of those things, and there's still, as I said to them at the time, a lot of stuff ongoing that will always remain and need fixing. How much were you aware of what was going on? Because, you know, you've always... You are Mr Sports Direct. It's your company. It's your baby. You built it. So you, you must have known, surely. You visit that warehouse regularly. You must have known some of the practices that were going on. Uh, on, on that point, I would, you'd be surprised how little I knew what was going on. And I think that's really where the failing was. Um, you would say, well, how... But how do I know what a night shift does from 12 at night till 7 in the morning or 8 in the morning... I don't work there on Saturdays and Sundays. You know, th th there's lots of hours in the week that I'm not there. Remember, it's open 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. So should I have known more? Yes. Was I aware of some of the things going on? Absolutely not. So when you first heard about some of the things that were happening, w were you appalled? If appalled if I believed them. My, my instant reaction was, no, that won't be happening at Sports Direct. It does, that sort of thing doesn't go on at Sports but Direct. But then you found out that it, that it was happening. Yeah, there was, but we mustn't take it out of context to think it was, it was like... If, if you went out there now, it, you would say, well, what's changed between now and six months ago? Mm. You probably wouldn't actually say there's very much changed at all. It is odd, isolated incidences that, that then sort of... It's the rotten... Uh, apple in the barrel that is sort of then you say well okay now I've got to try and go in the barrel and try and find the rotten apple that's more what it's been but all you have Mike is you have your reputation you spent a lot of time building this business up and I mean your reputation has been in the past few weeks it's been in tatters hasn't it and you must feel that personally and professionally yeah I also feel very annoyed that for the people at Sports Direct because I say it is, a, it is a, only a tiny fraction and it only takes one rotten apple in the barrel to, if you like, ruin the whole barrel. So, yeah, it's been annoying, isn't the word, yeah? Can I ask you about working practices at, at boardroom level? I mean, you are, you are the face, you are the name, it's, as we said, it's your baby. Are people able to say no to you? Are they able to challenge you on that board? Are they able to say, Mike, no, not this way, we need to look at this? Yeah, 100%. So, so we, we, we're, we're quite dynamic as a board, because when... People always say, well, you decide on everything. The reality is I don't. The reality is you've got a company that's very sectionalised and you tend to stick to the sections that you are personally responsible for. Mm. So should I have been more responsible with HR and in the warehouse and with agencies? The answer with, with hindsight is yes, but I genuinely wasn't dealing with those categories. But you say that the board is, is doing its job and it's re-elected at the recent AGM. I mean, you're, you're, Dave Forsey is, is still in place. Your chairman is still there as well. If you were trying to make fundamental changes and cultural changes to the way the business is run, how can you do that if exactly the same board is, is still in place? Because people looking at that will say, well, actually, this is all semantics. Nothing is actually changing about the way we do things. Well, I, I think it is changing due to the fact that I'm now coming in to... Uh, work very closely with HR and the warehouse and the agency. So from that point of view, it's changed. For, I had to support Keith Halliwell in the uh, AGM, so to, to give him an opportunity for another year. And he said if it, 
If he, he doesn't get the support of the independent shareholders in a year, he'll go. Dave Forsey lost his bonus, which is three, four million pounds. So mm. right from the very top, we take this a lot more personally than anybody out there can possibly imagine. What about the issue of, of zero hours contracts? Because mm. I mean, we've spoken to your um, employees on this sofa in recent weeks. Uh, that, that change there, they won't apply to agency staff at your warehouse where some of those worst practices were exposed. And these, these guys, they're not seasonal workers. They've worked for you for a long time. Yeah. Are you being fair in the way you're going about things? Will you, will you say they can opt for 12 hours plus or yeah. zero? Yeah, but if they opt for 12 hours plus and they're normally doing 20 or 15 hours a week, they'll still get those 20 or 15 hours a week. So it's just trying to get people into two categories, those who want a guaranteed minimum and those who actually don't. So you can't actually do more than that, in my opinion. And you, with what you've been saying in recent weeks, I know you've put your reputation on the line here because you've now said that if you can't turn this round, you will step down. Yep. you will leave. How long are you giving yourself to do that? And what will, what will turning things around actually look like for you, do you think? Yeah, there's, there's different, again, there's different types of turning something around. They're sort of saying, right, on the storefront, to, to uh, upgrade the stores, make the stores bigger, make, you know, make them less dense, nicer displays, that kind of thing. And there's on the personnel side where you've got things like uh, Sharbrook, where you're trying to say, well, we've got to try and make, move more people from the agencies direct onto sports direct books and get that flow and get that thing working a lot better so overall we want the culture at sports direct that we are actually one sports direct family that's what it was set up as and that's how we're going to do it so if you haven't done that in a year you'll you'll go is that what you're saying no, or you a, a year would be too quick so you, you've got to understand and I, and I said to the MPs this job never ends at sports direct you know, you suddenly get to the top of a mountain and all of a sudden there's another mountain to go and climb. So it is an ongoing process. It, it, it will never stop. Even when I'm dead, it will still not stop. It will keep going. I know that you, you, know, you, you, you deal with some of the criticism you get very well. And I know you laugh about the fact that, that people don't like you, say, whether it's Newcastle or as your job at, at Sports Direct. But in terms of, of PR, when those cameras were on you, a few weeks ago and you were showing people round the warehouse and you had a wad of 50 pound notes in your pocket surely you must have known I can see you smiling out you must have known that in the current climate with people looking at you in the way that they are with your workers in the situation they are in that's that's a massive PR disaster isn't it for you for, for that for those pictures and and for those headlines to come out again yes but I think that's why I've never really tried to do PR I don't I think I am a sort of a PR nightmare person <laughs> It, we said, let's make this whole day genuine, let's not do the Lord Mayor show, let's actually make it real, then people can never say we staged anything. Hmm. The one thing people didn't say to me was, Mike, have you checked how much money you've got in your pocket? And, of course, nobody thought to ask me whether or not I had genuinely been to the casino a few days earlier. And, 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 and on that, I do fly to work by helicopter. It's a reality. Hmm. So when people say, I'll be real, that, that's how I travel. You know, Sports Direct wanted to do a load more international business. You say, OK, guys, I don't get paid a salary, but what I do like to do is I do like to go by plane. And I do like to go by private plane because it saves a lot of time and it's very efficient. So then Sports Direct will have a plane coming. Hmm. And people will say, how can you have a plane when your workers are on minimum wage? I said, but I don't set the minimum wage. If the minimum wage should be the living wage, then the government who set the rules just set it at the living wage. That's, a, that's as I look at it. I, I understand where you come from. One final one. To those workers who might be watching this this morning and, and waiting to hear from you, because I know you haven't spoken too much on this, you, you say that your reputation's on the line and you will turn this round or, or step down. Are you confident then? You can say with, with the confidence and the passion that you used to set this business up as well, that let's say five years down the line, Sports Direct will be a very different place to, to what those MPs found and this independent review will, will find a company that is trying its best to turn things round for workers who face conditions which, you know, as we said, Victorian workhouse. OK, so let me be clear there, Dan. You said five years' time. I can tell you in the last five years, Sports Direct will have paid out over 200 million in bonuses. So I can tell you the, the cleaning lady got an £80,000 bonus on top of her normal pay. Nobody in the UK has done that. What we've got to do is focus on getting the bits we've got wrong to the extreme highs of the bits we've got right. And paying out that kind of money doesn't mean you're allowed to get these bits wrong where clearly I've taken my eye off the ball. Mm. I've said sorry, I've said I'm going to fix it, and I will.
appreciate your honesty. Thank you very much for coming on no this problem. morning, Thank Cheers. you. Thank Mike you. Ashley. Over you are watching BBC Breakfast. It's 20 past 8. Matt can tell us all about the weather. Morning.